Welcome back. Dr. Robin McKay, your host. This is Becoming the Channel, the Insiders Group on Facebook, or you might be watching the recording on YouTube. And I am the host of the beloved, what's becoming the beloved podcast, Becoming the Channel. And I'm so happy to welcome you here today. If you're new to this group, if you're new to the podcast, um, I'm your host, and I'm so excited to have you here. I have a PhD in counseling psychology. I won some awards for my work as a psychologist, and um, I'm also a clear channel, clear intuitive channel. And one of the things I love to do every week for our community is tune into the non-physical energies and with the help of my benevolent guides to support us as we're going through this week. So that's what we do every week. But before we get started today, I want to share with you something. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to share the fullest, most actualized version of yourself in public for your business? I know that we have a lot of people who are in the coaching and consulting space, people who are in the healing and transformation space as well. And one of the things that I know for sure is that we're always looking at how we can integrate our greatest gifts with business, with being in business. And I had this experience recently that I just want to share quickly with you along with an invitation, because I think you'll love this. So, you know, when I was five, I wanted to write books and I wanted to be a doctor. And when I was five, I tried to write my first book and it turned out I realized I didn't know how to spell yet. And more importantly than that, I didn't have anything to say. I couldn't tap into the words and I kind of inherently knew I was supposed to be able to tap into words and they just weren't there. So I had some work to do at five, as one does. And eventually I went on to get my PhD, as I had mentioned, in psychology. And I wrote an award-winning book with my academic mentor that was published in 2014. Smart Girls really was an academic intellectual pursuit. Of course, I poured my heart into it. Of course, I told stories. Of course, I brought things to life and to light. But it was very much from... I would say my healthiest ego state at the time as a, as a early career psychologist, as somebody who cared very much about the actualization of young uh, girls and on into womanhood as well. And I love that contribution. So all that to say that recently, actually last Friday, I was invited to be part of this book that was published and is a number one bestseller on Amazon. I'm pulling it up here just a second. It's this one, Akashic Wisdom on Ascension. And it is a co-authored book led by the one and only Jennifer Longmore. She's been my business coach for almost six years at this point and a host of amazing co-authors, Elise Bassine, who you've seen in this group, uh, Christina Rice, Dahlia Shook, and some others who are just wonderful. And I just am so honored to be a part of this book. But for me, I, co I contributed two chapters. Both of them channeled texts. One of them channeled from my, my friends in ancient Lemuria, my Lemurian High Council, who I've been working with for a couple of years. And another channeled from my, my allies in ancient Egypt, uh, which channeled on the future, actually, of business, of money, of psychology, of extracting yourself from the matrix and that kind of thing. And um, it was a great honor to write these books, but even more so than that, what I learned from this process is that my past self, had I tried to write this book, this, these chapters a few years ago, my past self would have been immensely worried about what my professional colleagues would think of me and would I lose credibility with them? And am I being too woo-woo? Am I being too out there? Am I going to lose business because I am coming out as a channel? Well, fortunately, I've done a lot of self-actualization work and have come to realize that the greatest act of betrayal is an act of self-betrayal. And since I knew from the time I was a little girl that I was meant to be writing books, and I have this kind of innate sense that I knew I was meant to be channeling books because I remember tapping in and not being able to get to find the flow, to find the stream that I was supposed to be channeling. So my lesson for you, maybe it applies to you, that if you have been looking for ways to really fully express yourself in the online space, 
as a coach, as a spiritual teacher, as a healer, as somebody who's out there on the ascension path, who's helping other people create the new world like I am and like my colleagues on this book are. Um, the sooner that you tune into and start expressing your full self, the easier it's going to be. I've reached a point in my career, and maybe you're there too, but if you're not, maybe this will be helpful. But I've reached a point in my career where I know I'm not for everybody. I'm not Nutella. And that I really truly believe that my mission here is self-actualization. And if I'm quashing my greatest gifts because I'm worried about what somebody else is going to think about me, then I'm really kind of off base in terms of self-actualization. So I hope that helps. If you want to get a copy of this, you can get it on Amazon. We'll put the link in the, in the comments for you to grab that. The electronic version, the e-copy is out now. And in a couple of weeks, a hard copy will be out as well. I'm going to be hosting... I think it's going to be a four week series where we're going to dive deep into my two chapters. And so if you want to be on the early notification list for that, just drop a book emoji in the comments and we will get you set up for learning about that. There's no pressure to enroll in it, 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 it but I don't see why you wouldn't want to. It's going to be a great time to dive into the text, to go line by line and to really kind of unpack the energetics and the meanings behind all the words in these two beautiful chapters. So if that's something you want to do again, drop your book emoji in the comments and we will get you on the early notification list for that. All right. So with that, then we're going to do our reading today. I'm looking over here. You see me looking over here. I've got two decks of cards and I want to see, I've already called in the guides. They want to use these. And, you know, I wrote that chapter on, um, the crystals, the crystalline technology that the Lemurians are known for um, can still be helpful for us today. In fact, I've been writing about the crystalline technology and, and speaking about it. I just did a masterclass on it last week um, that we can use these crystals to support us, not to solve the problems for us, but to raise our frequencies, to make it easier for us to channel these high frequencies, including wealth consciousness. So let's just see, what are they, which ones are we pulling today for us? They're going to be supportive. We've got this one, that one. Okay. Give me four. Okay. The first one is fluorite for introspection. Isn't that pretty? So when we think about introspection, that's a going within. That's a quieting yourself for long enough that you can hear the voice of your soul. And so, so what they're saying is just about discipline too. It does take discipline to do this because we've got so many competing priorities in our consciousness. There's social media, there's email, there's meetings, there's people, there's traffic, there's all kinds of things. There's even Wi-Fi that's streaming all the time for most of us. So we've got all of these distractions externally, which take us away from the, the voice of our soul. And so the discipline is to come back into the voice of your soul, to come back into your heart and to be more introspective this week, rather than looking externally for the answers, for the solutions, rather than looking externally for, should I do this or should I do that? Turning inward and tapping into the wisdom of your own heart. That doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes. As humans, we make a lot of mistakes. This is kind of part of the part of the deal here and we're meant to learn from them and we're meant to be creative as a result of the mistakes that we make. But if you can learn and start practicing trusting your inner voice, your intuition, that even if it looks externally like it's a mistake, there's a creative solution to whatever that is that's going on. This is going to be very helpful to you, immensely helpful, they say. And fluorite is here to assist you in the process of introspection. So introspection is first this week. The second one is, this is so cool. This is the flower agate, which is associated with the throat chakra. And it's all about expression. So after you're being introspective, you're diving deep inside of you, you're wondering, 
What are the stories that I can tell that are going to be immensely helpful to my community? What is the frequency that I can channel that is going to be immensely helpful to me and my community? It has to be helpful to both. Now that you've been introspective, now it's time for the creative expression. This is a time of storytelling, a time of tapping into the, the, the voice of your soul. And listen, I get it. There are some of us who are highly credentialed in this group. You've got your master's degree, you've got your PhD, you've got your MD, whatever. And so there can be this sense of, well, but how do I do that and remain professional? And remain professional, that's always the big question. Well, there is a way to do that. I'm demonstrating it right now. Um, and it comes from a place of being fully aligned with what your soul's purpose is, which is to express, to create, to evolve, to actualize, and integrating that with your credentials as best you can. So you shouldn't be feeling separate from the credentials. That should actually be sort of an embodiment as well as the voice of your soul. So the expression can come through, the expression of of your work, the expression of your perspective comes still through the channel of your credentials, of who you are publicly, but it comes through in a very authentic way. So you don't have to be self-conscious anymore about what you say or how you say it. You can just know that it is your perspective and that your perspective is valid. Next one is... I love these little guys, the Herkimer diamonds. I know I've talked about them like a million times before, but these guys are so special. I actually wear them a lot of times around. I've got three that sit on a necklace that I wear quite often. Here's why I like Herkimer diamonds. You can actually program them to carry the frequency that you desire to emit. And so Herkimer diamonds are about alignment. When you are aligned to the voice of your soul, when you are aligned to the messaging that you're meant to be delivering to your people as a messenger or as a way shower in, in your community. When you're aligned with that, everything flows more easily. The static goes away and you just get a clear signal. You get a clear signal between you and your divine helpers and between you and the people that you're meant to be communicating with. So Herkimer Diamond is a beautiful alignment crystal that can be very helpful in that process. And the last one, is the guides are all about empathy and rose quartz is this, I don't usually use food words to describe crystals, but in this case I will. It just is this yummy, cozy crystal of empathy. Be empathic with yourself. I think that a lot of us are very good at being empathic with other people. Maybe we're not so much with ourselves, but empathy turned inward is self-compassion. And that's what we're looking for this week. A lot of self-compassion as you explore the messages that you're meant to be transmitting right now, as you tune into the voice of your soul and begin expressing it. And as you come into full alignment with what you're meant to be doing right now in your, in your work and in your, in your communications with, with other people in your, in your area. Okay, that's the messaging today from the guides. Let's see, is there anything else? I have one more crystal. We got a bonus crystal today, citrine. Citrine is what happens to amethyst when it gets heated to high temperatures. It is the joy crystal. It emits this high frequency, like a, like a sunbeam of joy. And when you hold when you hold citrine or when you activate and align with the frequency of citrine, you actually can begin channeling joy. Everything good is riding on the frequencies of joy, of wealth consciousness, of well-being. Everything that you want to create is, is there. So if you're feeling a little bit crunchy, if you're feeling a little bit out of sorts, it's okay. Just decide that you're going to shift and be okay that it might take a little while to do that. But citrine is one of the crystals that can be very helpful just in shifting the frequencies very subtly and yet very appreciably, if you will. 
All right. So that's our reading for today. So good to be with you here. If you found this helpful, I'd love it if you'd leave a comment, say thank you, say what you're taking away from today. And if you'd like to share it with your network, please do that. Just take a screenshot of it and tag me in it so I can say thank you and see what you thought. All right. I will see you next week.